this was a simulated marble game. You had these ecological variables, the red balls. That's when we talk about economics and poverty and culture and language. This black marble in the middle represents instruction and text. And then we have barriers to reading and achievement. That can be fluency, comprehension, uh, monitoring, phonemic awareness, decoding, um, writing, et cetera. Uh, and then you see the gauges here. How do we move kids to basic and low knowledge or proficient and medium knowledge or advanced and high knowledge? With this simulated marble game, when I started hitting those barriers with the small marble, we had what I refer to as veering. There was some movement, but students were not moving fast enough and far enough, remaining at the bottom. So the prudent thing to do is, well, how do you increase the force and momentum? Newton's second law says this, if one object has more inertia than another, more first force is required to give the object the same acceleration as the first. And so I said, how do we give high quality instruction or research-based instruction and high quality text more force to break down the barriers? And I'm gonna illustrate what that means after this simulation. When I started using greater force, I started moving kids toward advanced and high levels of knowledge. And this goes back to the equation that I had uh, early on that uh, I'll bring back to your attention. So I said, every lesson should focus on this multi-dimensional reading model. All my students read and write across two texts and two topics every single lesson. That was the larger marble that I was using to give it more force. I'm paying attention to their concept of reading, uh, giving them fluency instruction, being explicit with decoding. They apply the vocabulary. I assess their comprehension of both reading and writing, and I'm focusing on personal growth and academic growth. Let's look at an example. This is from a special education classroom. A teacher said that uh, she wanted to uh, teach her students uh, about protons, neutrons, and electrons. And this was in a virtual environment. I said, how are we going to make them, or what do we really want to make them smart about? So I asked if we can plan the lesson together. I said, let's teach them about proton therapy. At the end of this lesson, a one hour lesson, I want the students to be uh, writing about proton therapy. The teacher initially informed me like, uh, Tatum, these are struggling students in the special education classroom. Let's spend the entire first day helping them decode words. This was her, uh, that's a small marble. And I said, we need greater force if we want to move these students to do the things that you want them to do. So this is a lesson on proton therapy, and you'll see their writing that took place within one hour based on greater force, the multidimensional reading model. Kids had a visual. Uh, today, you're going to become smart about proton therapy. It's a more precise treatment for killing cancer cells. You can also see the proton beam. Every image in this instance instigates writing. Now, I told students at the end of this hour, you're going to be writing about proton therapy. And then why is proton therapy important? It's a safer way to treat children with cancer. Knowledge development. But I had to show the kids how to decode words because I just can't give you great text without breaking it down. I told the students if you could decode the word, uh, recognize the letters A, E, I, O, and U and count to two, you can decode a large percent of words that I put in front of you independently. So if you look at the word diverticulitis, this was a model that I gave them. I said, wherever you see an A, E, I, O, and U, put an X beneath it. Okay, they got it. So let's count between the X's. Between those first two X's, you see one letter. If it's one letter, that letter think he's grown, he wants to be on his own. So we're going to push him out to the next syllable. Let's look at the next, next pair of X's. How many letters? One, two. If it's two, you split them up. Next pair of X's. How many letters between the X's? It's one. The letter thinks he's grown. He wants to be in his own. So we're going to allow him to move forward by pushing him out to the next syllable. Same rules throughout. 
This is how that student was decoding cardiovascular and cardiopulmonary. You heard him reading this, but he broke it down, but now he was reading them for the first time. And that's why that word it becomes diverticulitis. And so this is one of the ways that I show them how to break down those words. Gave them feedback. Now this is a lesson on proton therapy. I gave them one more example. This is the word bacteria. If you see, there's a key here. And so I cannot ignore the fact that kids need explicit decoding support, but I have to be able to give them access at the, uh, at the word level, the sentence level, and the text level. That's why I say kids need deliverance at all these particular levels if we want to make them uh, move them toward advanced levels. I'm gonna speed up here uh, just so I can get into another couple of lessons here and get your questions. But what I'm sharing with you now is the model of providing explicit decoding instruction for kids uh, third grade uh, and beyond. And my assessments will allow me to figure out if I need to go further in terms of phonological awareness and phonemic awareness and alphabetic knowledge. But by this time, most students uh, have this information. And then I had the students uh, in the special education classroom decode, uh, decode these four words that you have in front of you here, proton, therapy, tumors, and anesthesia using the same process. This is where the teacher wanted me to stop, just have them decode day one. Uh, I said, no, we need greater force, greater momentum to exalt these young readers and writers. This was the building meaning practice. Uh, everything we do, I want to make sure they have a strong concept of reading and then monitor their comprehension. Each day, 43 children are diagnosed with cancer in the United Blank, which means 15,590 blank in the U.S. are diagnosed each year. Even though I'm monitoring their, getting them to monitor their comprehension, uh, I'm also helping them become smart about something. Foundational skills and knowledge development must travel concurrently. They make for a wonderful marriage. So they got feedback on this. They had a fluency practice piece. Again, even with fluency practice, well, the idea was to get them to read 97% or 100% of those words accurately. I didn't want them to fall below 90%. Uh, there is this icon for support uh, that we will not play today. But even the fluency practice piece was designed to elevate knowledge development. And so every moment we get, it's a great opportunity to um, uh, monitor knowledge development while they are executing their skills. So proton therapy is designed to kill cancer cells, et cetera. So they go on and read this particular piece. And all of this is in one hour, mind you. Uh, and then uh, instead of you know, telling me what you think about it, uh, I use what's called line sets that I talk about uh, in the research as well. Uh, I had kids circle the line set that best captures the full meaning of the text. I want to make sure that the kids are capturing the full meaning of the entire text. If you see line set one in its color, if a kid chose line set one, I know they were only paying attention to that first paragraph where you see the same color. Line set three indicates to me, if you look at the colors here that I can give you feedback on, I now know my students are paying attention to the beginning of the text, the middle of the text, and the end of the text if they come up with this uh, correct response. And so this is how I assess comprehension and reading. I want to know that they're best capturing the full meaning of the entire uh, text. So you saw decoding, you saw fluency, you saw comprehension monitoring, and now you're seeing reading uh, comprehension. They read a second text. So again, I have students reading and writing across and thinking across multiple texts. That's what mature readers and writers can do. I'm seeding this S-E-E-D-E-D -E 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 in the elementary grades and where protons located. We're still getting into the lessons about protons, uh, but again, we now have students reading and writing. I gave them some writing tips, said use both text, write one page about proton therapy. And here was the student's writing. You see the variability in the writing, but the students would have never uh, arrived here during day one of the lesson if I only focused on explicit decoding instruction alone. I now have evidence of kids reading, writing, language, and knowledge as we talked about proton therapy. Now it's different. Student four says, I learned a lot about proton therapy. It kills cancer and it's and disease. I can give you feedback on your writing. Student three was looking at the proton beam. I learned about the proton beam and I liked 
and I did a lot of good stuff and that was new to me. I learned about stuff. Uh, I now, uh, again, this is my our first hour with these kids. Uh, I now have foundational uh, how I'm going to use instruction to move them towards exponential growth in reading and writing. 